This video is for all of my patients who have been told that their very real symptoms were just in their head. For all of my patients who've been belittled and dismissed for years, mold toxicity is real. I'm a board certified medical doctor. I have a master's degree in public health. I've been practicing medicine for a decade and I've published research. I have a clinical practice where I have time to listen to my patients and read the scientific literature. So when a patient comes in with an unusual complaint, I'm unsure what to do, I have the time to stop and research. And over the years, because so many patients have come in and told me that they've been made sick by exposure to mold, I've done a lot of research. And these things shouldn't get me upset anymore, but they do. And just this weekend, I was sent a magazine article and it was describing the plight of patients who had been made sick by mold. And halfway through, the article directly states that there are no clinical studies showing that mold causes illness. This is completely wrong. And I get upset because in my office, I see patient after patient come in and tell me that they've seen doctors who have told them that mold doesn't cause illness, that if it does, it's just allergies, that they should relax, right? They need to take an antidepressant. And I'm just tired of hearing this. I'm tired of having my patients being made to feel like they're crazy. And I'm tired for doctors to just get this completely wrong. So we are going to go through a very small portion of the medical evidence showing how mold illness is real. This is not made up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do three quick high level studies. And then I want to show you the personal research I've been doing uh, over the last 10 years to try to help my patients. And it's important. Mold doesn't cause everything. Not everyone with chronic fatigue and depression and neurologic symptoms is made sick by mold. You can have the same people living in the same house and some people are devastatingly ill and some people are not. Part of the trick is that different patients have different vulnerabilities to mold. And so it's perfectly acceptable for a family of five, for example, that I saw move into a very moldy house in Florida. Two were incredibly sick with toxic mold. One had no symptoms at all, and two had allergic symptoms of asthma, eczema, and, and runny nose congestion. So there is a wide range of symptoms that mold can cause. But to say that mold toxicity does not exist is just completely stupid and, uh, quite frankly, irresponsible. So let's dive in here and look at the evidence. First study. So we are going to start uh, across the ocean in Finland and... What we have here is a study that compared 116 police officers uh, who were exposed in a, a station uh, that was exposed to mold versus 45 non-mold exposed controls. And what you can see here on the top left here, uh, disease or symptoms, we have central nervous system uh, symptoms, we have autonomic nervous system uh, symptoms, we have asthma, multiple chemical sensitivity, fatigue, muscle pain, respiratory symptoms, cardiac arrhythmia. Uh, you will see that the symptoms here are much deeper and broader than just allergies, breathing troubles, right? They, they really run the gamut. And what you can see is that the study cohort had significantly higher symptoms than the control cohort. And uh, we can see in particular, um, a huge amount uh, had fatigue. Um, we have more respiratory symptoms. We have more asthma. We have three times as many uh, central nervous system symptoms. Uh, so these neurologic and these deep systemic symptoms go way beyond uh, simply just saying asthma. Uh, so we can see symptom profile is very different. Uh, you know, if that were one study, we could say it's just one, you know, outlier. Maybe they weren't being exposed to mold. Maybe it was something else different about the one office versus the next. But paper after paper shows this to be true. Here's a, a researcher by the name of Kay Kilborn, uh, a fantastic paper where uh, she compares mold exposed patients to those uh, without being exposed to mold. She also includes chemical uh, exposed patients, but we'll, we'll focus right on the mold right now. So we have 105 patients. They're being exposed to visible documented mold in their home uh, versus 200 or so healthy controls. And uh, they found a huge burden of neurologic symptoms um, here with mold exposure. 75% had problems with the finger to nose test, right? Indicating a deep cerebellar dysfunction. They had peripheral neuropathy, very common in my practice. Um, almost half had ataxia. We have abnormal balance, motor control, tremors, dysmetria. This is not allergies. This is deep neurologic symptoms from toxicity. 
And uh, again, this is a really kind of neat study back in 2003. Uh, Dr. Vojdani and Dr. Campbell uh, ran point on this. And we see again and again just a huge discrepancy between patients exposed to mold and controls. You just take a look at the amount of patients having fatigue here with the mold exposed patients, over 92%. In my practice, if someone doesn't have fatigue, it, it's very hard for me to think that they have mold toxicity. It's just so common, this deep, persistent, you know, bone deep um, fatigue. And then you'll also see neurologic and psychiatric symptoms here. We see depression, we see brain fog and memory disturbances. We see huge amounts of anxiety, muscle and joint aches. These are the symptoms of toxicity, um, multiple chemical sensitivity, a very good marker for mold illness. You'll see it all the time, uh, very commonly in patients who have been exposed to mold. So this is the tip of the iceberg. If you read the medical literature or just take a few minutes, you'll see that this is not uncommon, uh, that, that mold toxicity is very well established in the literature. And let me pivot now to show you even another layer deep of why I feel so strongly that mold can cause illness and why I really hope this video can reach um, patients who've been told they were crazy, it can reach practitioners uh, who may not have the time like I do in my practice to, to dig through their research and find out what's true and what's not. So, so let's turn the page one more time and take a look at another series of evidence. Okay, so here's a project I've been putting together over the last 10 years. And whenever I go to the medical literature to find a paper on mold, I, I will kind of include it in here. So we're just going to briefly uh, fact check the claim. There is no evidence to support mold toxicity is real. Uh, so here we have, and I haven't bothered to count the number of references, but each bullet point is a single medical uh, study. So here are multiple studies showing that uh, exposure to mold directly drives symptoms. Uh, there are a number of papers uh, showing the development of new onset autoimmunity following exposure to water damaged buildings. This is common in my clinical practice, particularly uh, new onset Graves disease or Hashimoto's thyroid. Uh, thyroiditis is very common. I've also seen Crohn's disease uh, happen after someone moved into water buildings. Um, here are references showing that antibodies to mold uh, in a patient's serum and urinary mycotoxins uh, can be detected uh, in patients who've been exposed to water damaged buildings. Uh, here's a review of the different clinical syndromes that have been associated with mold exposure. Um, so first is a, a broad number of neurological deficits um, that have been associated with exposure uh, to mold um, in uh, children uh, and in adults. Um, chronic fatigue is extremely well established um, as being associated with mold. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, this is extremely common. Mold is the direct cause of Alzheimer's in some cases that I have directly seen. Um, and in speaking to other experts who make it their full-time work to deal with Alzheimer's uh, at a conference uh, lately, uh, perhaps up to 75% uh, of patients with Alzheimer's have detectable urinary mycotoxins. Um, we know that mycotoxins can become airborne uh, in water damaged buildings. We know that mycotoxins can be directly detected in the blood of individuals exposed to mold from water damaged buildings. And so this is not just the case that we eat moldy grains or coffee or corn. Um, we know for sure that urinary mycotoxins, uh, thanks to the work of Dr. Andrew Campbell here, urinary mycotoxins can be uh, directly detected, detected in the body. Mycotoxins can be detected in a whole bunch of bodily fluids. Uh, from individuals exposed to mold. Uh, we know mycotoxins, again, come from indoor environments. Um, we have a number of studies showing that um, mycotoxins detected in the urine are reliable and useful in a variety of clinical settings. We know that mycotoxins cause cancer. So for those who uh, say that mold cannot cause disease, I would um, advise you to Google aflatoxin and hepatocellular carcinoma. This is an extremely well-established risk factor by every single serious medical body. We know that mold toxins can in increase the risk of adverse uh, birth outcomes. And we know, again, that they can be transferred from the mother to the developing fetus. We have a variety of papers on treatment um, using antifungals of a variety of different uh, sorts. 
and uh, we even have uh, a case report of a uh, onset of, of chronic mycotic demyelinating optic neuritis uh, that was successfully treated by Dr. Campbell with oral itraconazole. So when, when you hear the claim, there is no evidence for mold to cause disease, I want you to remember that just a huge number of studies, and this is the tip of the iceberg. I, I am primarily a, a clinician. I spend most of my time in, in clinic with patients. But if, if I can find time to just read and research, then people writing articles saying that mold toxicity doesn't exist should be able to take 30 seconds and open up PubMed. So in conclusion, I, I don't, don't want to be a gotcha. I don't want to be, you know, they're wrong, I'm right. But this is about patients suffering for years, patients with real symptoms, with real illness, who've been ignored and dismissed by countless doctors. I, I just want more people to realize that mold can cause illness so that we can all get better at treating it. We can identify it better. We can learn what tests to use when. We can learn what treatments are best at what time and what group of patients. Right now, if more, if the vast majority of the medical community refuses to believe that this exists, how are we going to get anywhere in improving care? So my, my request to anyone, if you've made it this far uh, into the video, uh, thank you. But more importantly, share this with someone who has been told that they're crazy, that symptoms are in their head. Share it with a medical professional um, who would like to learn more about uh, the science behind mold illness. And um, hope you're well. Um, take care. Thank you for watching.